it's green. So. Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Where has this week gone? It has been just crazy busy. I missed you the last two weeks. It was fun to be on the other side of the camera, but I didn't get to have FaceTime with you. It seemed kind of weird. But you had an opportunity to see Marisa, and you saw Michelle, you got to see different faces. And I think that's good, because they are the teachers that work with you in the classroom and online. So it's always nice to be able to see them, put a face to them, make sure that you know who they are. Gives you a chance to catch up. Made my coffee, so I'm ready. Got everything set. We're going to do live talking about the holidays. I know it's early, isn't it? But it's not. Halloween's have been in the store forever. Christmas is in the store. Thanksgiving is in the store. It's like, oh my gosh. It's all happening at once. Anymore, people do just bring it all in. And so you'll have the red of Christmas at the same time that you have the orange of Halloween, at the same time that you have the browns of Thanksgiving, and then they sneak in some of the white for New Year's all at the same time. And really, I'm still kind of caught up in the end of summer. I don't know about you, but it's hard to let go of the summer. Although the temperatures have dropped, the days are getting shorter, and it is definitely moving through the seasons, but we're in that transition. So today I thought we'd talk about the holidays, getting ready for them, what that means, how to design, and what does it mean to have a holiday during a pandemic? This is going to be different than any holiday that we have ever had. I'm sure you've never lived through a holiday like this. I know I haven't. It's going to be interesting. Let's do housekeeping. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways for a bigger picture. If the comments get in your way, swipe, and it will put it in silent mode so you can see and hear me, but you don't see the comments. Then when you want them, you swipe back the other way and you will get them. If you're on your computer or laptop, you can go full screen, get larger than life. If you're watching me on YouTube, you might be watching me on your big screen TV. Oh my gosh, it's just like so many different ways to connect. So we'll get started and talk about the holidays. There's really two parts that I want to think about as we're working. One is how you you personally, you as a person, you as an individual, are preparing yourself for the holidays, thinking about self-care. Because as a professional, the second place, as a professional, we need to be serving our clients and help them with the holidays. But it's impossible to serve them and help if you haven't taken care of yourself. So, kind of two things to think about. While I'm getting some greens here, I'm going to be doing some designs that are for the holidays, but just with some different vibes to them, thinking different ways. But while I'm doing that, if you have not already put your tulip in, if you're a member of the tulip tribe, add your tulip, let everybody know. Introduce yourself, let them know where you're from, so that we all get to meet each other. It's kind of important to know everybody and to know what's going on. I gotta figure out what greens I want. I'm kind of like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. There's so many choices. And I have to have a little bit of everything because that's just the way I am. Now, introduce yourself, put your tulip in, and prepare your questions. We've got everybody here. Marisa and Michelle are in the studio with me. They're monitoring Facebook and YouTube, and they'll be voicing your questions to me so that I can answer. Then we also have Susie in Caledonia virtually on Facebook and YouTube, so that they're greeting you and answering questions as they can there. And then we do have class in session today. Yes, we're in school too. It's kind of so nice to be back teaching in the classroom. And we have a group in the classroom right now 
doing wedding trends and techniques and they're working on a foam free arbor right at this exact moment and it's turning out so cool i went out and looked to peek and see how they were doing and they've got the foam free arbor underway and it's exquisite teacher carolyn is out there with them working on that and helping them make sure that they've got everything figured out so that when they go home they can do arbors foam free and keep up with all those winter weddings. It's going to be a busy season. Last weekend was the biggest wedding weekend of 2020. Did you have a wedding? That's a good question for you, the tribe, all of you out there. Who had weddings this last weekend? It was 10, 10, 20, so the magic numbers, 10, 10, 20, October 10th, 2020. And so it was the biggest wedding weekend of the entire year during a pandemic. So did you have weddings? Were you busy? I know that um, Teacher Jerry had weddings. I think Teacher Carolyn was working with her. I know uh, several of our students and graduates had weddings. They had posted pictures. It was fun to see. So I've used two aspidistra leaves a little bit of Israeli ruscus, a little bit of Italian ruscus, and I did the wrapping. Um, that's a technique you probably have seen before. We did it on one of our Tulip Tuesday tips for the tribe, where rather than having to insert a whole lot of stems, you just take one long stem, and then you wrap, and it's the fastest way to pre-green so that you can be efficient which is super important during the holidays. If you aren't efficient, you can't get the job done. And you want to be able to go home with your family. There's one thing we have learned during the pandemic is how important our families are, our friends, our personal life, our personal time. And so we've learned that we have to practice self-care. We have to pay attention to ourselves and definitely service our customers, but do it in such a way that's efficient so that we can do it rapidly. That way, if you don't have enough help coming in because maybe they can't come in, maybe they're afraid to come in, maybe your city isn't allowing everybody to be working, maybe with space requirements, you don't have the space to have multiple people working. And so you end up doing more of the work and efficiency becomes really important. So I did two just mocked up base designs. I just used a gripper bowl, little design bowl, nothing fancy. I like to use these because they're waterproof, they're inexpensive, they have little teeth so you don't even have to tape, you can just place your foam in and it locks it into place fairly well. If you're doing something really big you might want to tape it, but for most I just set it in. A third of a brick plopped in there and then design and it's super fast, super efficient, super easy, and then of course it's ugly, so you don't want to deliver in that, but you can take and just set it into another container and then design, so it makes it easy. And when it comes time to deliver, you can take it out, that way you don't have to worry about it tipping over and falling. And then you set it back. You can set it into anything. You know, maybe I want to put it in here. Now this is deeper, so rather than let it just fall down, using a small bit of styrofoam, I'm just breaking that down, then setting that in, setting that atop, and then it's ready. So doing pre-greening like this, Setting things up is one of the many efficiencies that you can do to get ready for the holiday so that you're set. And it could be any holiday. This could be Halloween. This could be Thanksgiving. It could be Christmas. It could be Hanukkah, New Year's, Valentine's Day. It doesn't matter. It's just foliage in a container. So it makes it quick and easy. So Marisa, Michelle, what's going on out there? Anything exciting? Oh boy, yes. Okay, so, so far, lots of tulips I see out there. I have Jim, Robin, Beatrice, Kim, Sharon, who is a recent FDI graduate, 
Nikki and Karen, whose four-year-old has been waiting all day for the live. Vanjie, Sue, uh, Tabitha, who loves your necklace. Annalise, Harmony, Denise, Arthur, Lori, Vega, Trish, Molly, and Scott. And um, with, in addition to your question about who had weddings, Lori had two. Renee, Lisa, and Lynn all had one. Dennis had, I think I wrote down a number four here. I can't tell what that was. Nikki did her first one. Vega did two. Bobby had four. And although Scott had a birthday, I would also like to say happy birthday to Scott. Yes. That's right. It is his birthday, too. That's right. Thank you. And yes, I love the necklace. It was a gift from a very special person. So thank you. And it sounds like you all were very busy. That's great. You know, when the pandemic first started, we were all so worried, would we even have jobs? Would people buy flowers? Would this be a year that was tragic for us in business? And in the reality, many people are busier than they've ever been simply because people need flowers. And especially now when many times you can't visit your loved ones, you can't travel to see them, it's important to send flowers. I know I have bought more flowers than I have in a lot of time because my father-in-law is in Indiana and he's in a care facility so he can't even have visitors. They don't allow anyone in. So never mind that I can't fly there to see him. If I did fly, I can't go in to see him. And so I send flowers and the florist there, we become just best friends and I call her up. I'm like, what's cool today? That's little, that will fit on a table in a nursing home, but and lost a long time. So there's lots of little things, but, and they always take care of me. And I realized when I started relying on them to saying I love you to my family, how important each of you are, and I am, and we're all important because we're helping people stay connected. And this holiday season is going to be a big one for connection because, again, a lot of people won't be able to travel to see their loved ones. Many won't be able to, even if they're in the same area, be together because of fears. So it's going to be very, very important. I've tucked in some Dusty Miller into this one. While I gather some more things, Michelle, what else is going on? Well, Lynn said she saw a sign at the florist the other day that said, stay home, send flowers. <laughs> That's great because we all do need to stay home and we all need to send flowers. In fact, um, I'm taking some flowers to someone tomorrow because they made my life just super special last week and I couldn't have done it without them. So I have a beautiful little bouquet that Teacher Michelle made for me to take and deliver tomorrow so that they feel special and feel loved. So even though, yes, I'm a florist, yes, I could do it myself, but it was sure nice to say, hey, will somebody do this for me? And so Marisa was getting ready with all the class stuff. Carolyn was teaching and Michelle jumped on it and took care of it so that I have flowers to deliver tomorrow, which just makes my day because this person made my day last week. So now I'm gonna make their day tomorrow, which will be pretty grand. So now I'm adding pepperberry so that you can see how I can do the exact same greening virtually. I didn't really change this too much. I, I put the same type of greens. This one I did some aspidistra, but mostly it's the same. But then going back and adding in the pepperberry changes it drastically. What else is going on out there? I'm just gonna keep poking. You guys keep answering questions and asking questions. So on YouTube, Ginger has a great question. How long will the pre-greening in floral foam last? She's thinking ahead to holidays. Pre-green away. You can do it way in advance, two weeks, maybe more, depending on how much cooler space you have. I know when I had my flower shop, I lived across the street from it. And my flower shop, I didn't have a lot of cooler space. I just had like a three-door cooler, and the shop was very small. We were inside an office building. So we would pre-green, you know, 50, 75, 100 of these bowls for the holidays with evergreens and such, 
And I just put them out on my back patio at home because it was cold and it was wet here in Oregon. And they would last on that back patio. We would green starting in mid-November and then use them all through December without any problem. Now, if you don't have those cold temperatures, then you've got to worry. So you might only be able to do a week if you're doing it at room temperature. But if you've got refrigeration and you use sturdy foliages like the Ruscus, Salal, um, Italian Ruscus, Aspidistra, Boxwood, Pittosporum, all of those will hold so well that you don't have to worry. So now I've got some pepperberry and I thought I'd put in some calcinia just because it's so beautiful. Doesn't that look great? This is some of the nicest calcinia I've ever seen. It's so full and dramatic. It's just grand. So I'll do maybe something with a little asymmetrical vibe, bringing it up over here. So yeah, yeah Lori has um, a, a comment to everyone out there. So apparently, um, her Christmas sales uh, lately actually have been like going out the roof. She says she's been selling silk wreaths and ribbon out the wazoo. That is very true, Lori. You are um, experiencing the reality of our world right now. Everyone is having cabin fever. I mean, think of it. We've been at home since March. And yes, we're out and doing some things, but it's still really quite limited. And they're still trying to keep small groups and no gatherings and stay home. And I mean, when was the last time you went to a movie theater? You know, I mean, we just aren't doing these things. Or stop at a pizza place for pizza and beer with a group. No. And so people are doing more to decorate their homes. I think this holiday season, if I had to forecast, it's going to be one of the biggest seasons ever. And it's going to be a difficult one because supply chain is still interrupted. So getting the materials is still challenging. We are all having to struggle to get everything we want. And yet at the same time, people are saying, I want, I want, I want. Even delivering with no contact delivery and then having your employees in trying to work all presents challenges. So it's going to be vital that you do prepare ahead, do pre-greening. I mean, all of this can be done a week ahead. This is going to hold, this will hold like forever. You know, it's not going to go anywhere. And that way, when it comes time to add flowers, I can go back and just add in flowers, finishing it up. This is going to hold, now the Dusty Miller, not so well. Dusty Miller, I probably wouldn't put in till the last because it does need a lot of drinking. And so it will fade more rapidly than the rest. So that I wouldn't do as a pre, I would do that at the point of flowering. But doing all of this ahead of time so that you can then service your customers, get it delivered on time, do everything you need, and still get home in time for dinner. Still take care of you. You know, I think that those days where we would work till midnight and then come back at 4 a.m. or never go home at all, just take a nap on the floor at the flower shop, those days are hopefully over. Hopefully we've learned that there's more important things than working that hard. That now you want to work smart and work wisely so that you can take care of you and take care of your customers. You know, it's all these little things. I would not wish a pandemic on anyone, but I think that we have learned from this that there are very important things about taking care of ourselves that we just need to be better about, need to be more observant of our personal time, our personal life, our personal people, you know, the things that are important in life. So I'm going to do one here with yellow and one with red while I'm poking flowers. You guys keep me posted as to what's going on. Well, I would like to give a shout out to Lynn Ann from California. She's a new Flower Club member and this is her very first live. Well, Lynn Ann, welcome. I'm glad you joined us. It's so fun to have you guys in the Flower Club. The Flower Club, for those of you that don't know, is uh, it's evolved, to be perfectly honest. I first started it so many years ago as a way to do kind of like a Cliff's Notes cheat sheet, follow-up reminder for graduates, you know, about what you learned in flower school. So it's just kind of a review. So there's a, a 
educational library on um, elements and principles. So you can look up line and you can study what is static line, what is dynamic line, and learn a little bit about that. It's not the whole lesson from class, but it gives you just a little bit of a reminder and you go, oh yeah, I remember learning that. And then there's, um, oh, there's pricing, yeah, because everybody wants to know pricing. And we teach it in flower school, but on the Flower Lovers Club, I show you three different ways. And live next week is going to be all about pricing. So for those of you that always go, well, how much would you charge for that? Next week, we'll discuss that. Um, we're not doing that this week. This week, we're still just going to be talking about the holidays and preparation. But the Flower Lovers Club started out as just kind of a, a reminder and refresher educational videos for our students. And then we opened it up to anybody that wanted online education, that just wanted to really know what's going on. Then we added to it and we put in a discount to all of the Flower Lovers Club people. You get 20% off on all the supplies and such that we sell so that when you're designing you've got um, access to things at a little lower price so that it's affordable so that you can design more and um, save that money and spend it on flowers, which is important. And then the club evolved to where it's a community. And that's why we added in the Facebook group that includes all the Flower Lovers Club members so that you can communicate with each other in a private spot and really stay in touch and help kind of reinforce everybody and give them a little bit of encouragement because we all need that. We need to feel good, to feel like we have like-minded people around. So I'm glad you're here on your first live. Everybody greet her, say hi Lynn Ann, get to know her. Lynn Ann, make sure you put in there where you're from so that they can know if you're close to them because who knows, you may have a tribe member right in your own area or close by. Leanne, is pepperberry long lasting? Pepperberry is very long lasting. It will actually dry. Um, the leaves get brittle and kind of can fall off, but the pepper berries themselves keep their color. Think about the peppers in your pepper grinder. It's the same type of thing. So they'll dry, but they're still pretty. Um, actually, very pretty. So. Uh, I have a great question from Teresa. She's asking if you don't have a, wait, excuse me, if you don't have cooler space, can you leave these greened up on a shelf? You could for a little while, but they're not going to hold as well as if they were refrigerated. Um, so cool is necessary to keep them alive for a long time. If you don't have cooler space, if you've got, if you live in a cold climate that it's not going to freeze, you could put them outside, um, put them in your garage. Uh, if you're in a hot climate, obviously that won't work. Uh, but find the coolest place in your area and keep them there so that they'll hold. If it's inside, you know, if your house is 70 degrees or 75 degrees or whatever, they're not gonna hold as well as if you could get it down into 60 something, that would be better, optimal. So I'm just kind of doing this one in a radial. This one I'm doing a little more linear. I brought it from the front to the back and then came through on an asymmetrical line. Turn it around so you can see the back side too. I'm just kind of tucking things in. Let's see, what else do I want to do here? Maybe add, thinking one kind of Christmassy, one kind of autumn-y. Maybe add some red carnations tucked low, basing them to draw the eye down. Man, I do have a couple questions about workshops that we hold here. Um, going back to earlier how you mentioned how, how our students are doing phone free out in the classroom right now. Um, Nikki wants to know when is the next phone free class and then Annie in addition wants to know if she can take the two day workshops without taking more of the basic workshops first. It depends on which ones you're looking at. The next foam free is Bespo Design, which is in November. I want to say it's on the 7th. It's a one-day workshop, and that one will be here, and it'll be foam free. Then, um, as far as taking the classes without previous, the key would be, is it an advanced workshop or a beginning workshop? Like the Bespo is a more beginning workshop, 
The Wedding Trends and Techniques is a more advanced workshop. So if you didn't have experience, the advanced could be a little overwhelming and you might get frustrated because you didn't know what was going on and that would be a little bit awkward. So you've got to just kind of know where your skill levels are to be able to do that. And you know, we could do a foam free right now. I'll set these aside, we'll come back to them because the goal on this was just to talk about pre-greening, pre-planning, and then add flowers to get it to the holiday you want, be it to Christmas or more into the autumn with Halloween or Thanksgiving. But let's go ahead and do a foam free too, just so that we can talk about that because you can prepare for foam free just like you can prepare with foam. So it's not like you can only prepare in foam, duh, hello. So uh, foam free preparation could be as simple as floral netting, the chicken wire, or it could be just a weave in your hand with foliage. You don't have to um, use foam. Or you could build an armature. And I thought I'd go ahead and build an armature, much like we do in class when we talk about alternative mechanics. Because sometimes it's not floral netting that you want. Sometimes it's not foam that you want. Sometimes you just want a natural feel. And so taking curly willow, when it's pliable, it has to be fresh and pliable, and just gathering it in your hand. And this is something you could do far in advance. You could be doing this right now, getting ready for the upcoming holidays. Whoa, those scissors are tight. There we go. Might need to get my WD-40 on those. Um, but you could make this up, and you don't need refrigeration with this because curly willow will just be fine by itself. So those of you that don't have refrigeration, you can still plan ahead easily. So I'm just gathering quite a bit in my hand. And then I'm going to cut off this lower portion because I don't need this. So just removing it. That way I don't have to wrestle with it. And then taking a small amount of bind wire. Comes in green, brown, ivory. I use brown because it kind of goes with the curly willow. And then lashing this together. Just right, wrapping it around. I go around two, three, four times because I don't want it to break. And then twisting it. Any other first timers out there? If you're a first timer, let us know. And then you and the tribe, Greet them, welcome them, get to know them. Let them know we love having them here. If there's somebody that you think should be with us, tag them. Share this out. Spread the word. Let them know, guys, it's not too soon to be getting ready for the holidays because it's going to be crazy busy this year. And if we don't plan now to be prepared for that crazy busy, You'll go bonkers as the time comes along. You'll just be going like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? Because trying to find enough help could be a challenge. I know we've been getting calls already with people saying, do you have any graduates in my town? I need to hire somebody. And so I've been updating the job list to make sure that graduates can find everybody. But yeah, it's going to be crazy busy. What else is happening? All right, uh, Randall Kathy just chimed in and says that this is her first time. So hello, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Glad you're here. And um, Beatrice has a very great question. She's asking, when you uh, green a head using foam, does bacteria not build up? It will build up. Yes, it does, guaranteed, because as soon as you start soaking that foam, period, as soon as you put water in it, bacteria starts building. So that would be the one thing you've gotta be careful of, and that's where refrigeration and flower food will slow down that problem, because flower food has an antibacterial in it. So if you've got that, it'll keep it clean longer, and if it's refrigerated, it slows down the buildup of bacteria as well. So pre-planning becomes pretty important because you've got to be able to do all this work in a very short period of time. And then it's the science of how long will things last, how much bacteria builds up, can I do this, that, or the other thing. And that's where experience comes into play, where just learning 
the life of your materials and how it all works and all of that makes a difference. So I've got an armature put together here. You can see how I just wove it together and then looped it around, creating a nice base to build into. Then all I need to do is add in my foliage and my flowers. And if I was doing it as a pre-plan, I would start with the foliage because that could be done ahead of time. It doesn't have to wait till later. So taking some Israeli ruskin, maybe a little bit of a gonus. That chocolate color is so beautiful for the season. Break it down a bit. Leanne, uh, Bobby wants to know how to become part of the Tulip Tribe. The Tulip Tribe is a mixture. There's actually three different ways to be part of the Tulip Tribe. Every single one of our graduates, clear back to 1969, yes, we've been teaching floral design for a very long time. So every single graduate since 1969 is a member of the Tulip Tribe. Then our current students, all the online students, all the classroom students, you're automatically a member of the Tulip Tribe. Then if you're a member of the Flower Lovers Club, you're a member of the tribe. You're supporting free education. The Flower Lovers Club, we give to you the education and the discount. And by your membership, your subscription, you're helping to support free education for everybody. That's how we do these weekly lives. You know, they don't happen for free. There's five of us working on this right now. But because of the club and our students and everything on the peripheral, we can do this. So to become a member of the tribe, join the Flower Lovers Club, join us for a class online or in the classroom, and then you are a member. And it's pretty great. I had an email come in from Linda, and I don't know if she's with us today or not. Linda McCluskey, if you guys see her pop through there, let me know. But she was a student of mine back in about 1998, maybe, 97, so a lot of years ago. And she says, oh, you probably don't remember me. And I did remember her. I remembered that name. And she currently spends her summers in Toronto and her winters in Florida. And she's been making arrangements for the adult living place so that they can all enjoy flowers. And she said, it's making my head really big because they keep complimenting me on how beautiful they are. And I thought, well, of course they are because you're so talented. Um, but she's a member of our tribe and it dates back to 1996 or seven or eight, somewhere in there. So once you're a member of the tribe, you always are part of us because that's what's important. So hopefully you'll join us be it in class, online, or in the club. We'd love to have you. So now this part also could be done way in advance. This is going to hold, not be a problem. Set it on the shelf, set it in the cooler, leave it in water. Maybe cut that down a little bit. And then when it comes closer to the holiday, you might have 50 of these on the shelf. Or maybe you're a smaller store, you have 10 of these on the shelf. Or maybe you're even smaller, you have three on the shelf. But then when it's crazy busy, you just go and grab it off the shelf and finish it with flowers. So I'm going to set this down so I can grab some flowers, get things ready here, move things aside. We've got some beautiful sunflowers. Leanne, on YouTube we have another first-timer. Lori is joining us today. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Make sure you let everybody know where you're from so that they can get to know you. YouTubers, reach out to Lori. Make her feel special. Let her know we're glad she's here. You know, it's so much fun to have people from all over the world that join us. And it's just, 
fascinating to me. And we had some people from somewhere in the UK that connected on live a few weeks ago, and I just had to laugh. It's like, how funny, how small the world is. Marisa, what's going on? Well, over here on Facebook, we also have another first-timer that joined us. Um, their name is Viddet. Um, they're in Melbourne and is moving back to Sri Lanka and hopes to watch um, from their country and is also going to be joining us soon um, online. Oh, wonderful. So glad to have you. So you're in Melbourne. You're actually getting ready for spring and the spring world as opposed to the autumn world that I'm doing today. Uh, I had uh, one of our tribe people posted some pictures from her yard in Australia and it was beautiful bearded iris and I thought oh my gosh it's springtime in Australia and I just had to laugh because here we are all with all the browns and golds and oranges and she was coming in with the beautiful purples and blues and spring flowers. And it's just, I forget that it's the opposite side of the world. So it's just different, which is kind of fun. Yeah. And then speaking of all around the world, we have quite an international crowd over here on Facebook. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Pataluma. Jamaica, we have a handful of people from the UK, Iceland, New Jersey, North Carolina, North Virginia, British Columbia, Wales, Palm Beach, New York, Taiwan, Puerto Rico, Missouri, again, uh, several people from Canada, Alaska, Paraguay, a uh, few people from Australia, New York, and Scotland. Wow. Isn't that fun? I, I... I would never have thought back in 1988 when I bought the Foil Design Institute, I never in the wildest dreams believed or thought that someday I would be teaching floral design to people from all over the world and sharing and collaborating with you on a weekly basis talking flowers. I mean, isn't that just Hard to even believe. I, I just am always blown out of the water when I think about how the world has allowed us to connect from afar. And, you know, everybody was so worried that the digital world was going to stop personal relationships. And I have found the exact opposite, that the digital world has allowed us to have greater personal relationships and allowed us to know so much more and learn so much more. So wonderful. So I've added sunflowers. Now I'm adding in some dahlias. Does that look like autumn? Does that look like something perfect for Thanksgiving? Kind of fun. Just bringing it in, using the armature to keep things separated so that it spreads out. What you got there, Michelle? So speaking of holidays and upcoming ones, Nikki said that she's prepared some Thanksgiving and Christmas centerpieces and having a professional photographer take pictures so she's ready to roll when the season gets here. Brilliant, Nikki. And that's something that everyone can do is start making up some of the arrangements that you want to sell for the holidays. Get them pre-made now. No, you can't sell them at the holidays, but make them now and then get photos of them. You can have a professional do it. You can do it yourself. You know, get out your phone and, and take some pictures. And people say, well, what if I don't do a good one? Well, you might not do a good one. But the secret to getting good pictures is to take a lot. And by accident, one might turn out good. And wouldn't that be great? So you win because A, you have flowers because you've been practicing and designing. B, you get to practice. C, you're building up photo collateral, and D, then you're ready for the holidays to be able to sell flowers to everyone, to keep them happy, make you happy. You know, because the more flowers you sell, the more fun you have. Look at this. So lace leaf maple, it's from Teacher Michelle's yard. She didn't know I stole it. She brought some flowers, some foliage in for class, and I thought, well, the class doesn't need all of that. So I took it. So the class didn't get this part because I decided it needed to be in my bouquet. 
um, but it was just so gorgeous. I love lace leaf maple. My very, 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 very first um, place that I lived as an adult had a lace leaf maple out in the front yard, and it was the it was actually the only part of the house I liked. The rest of it was not very, very special at all. But the lace leaf maple was stunning. And when it changed colors and at every stage it was beautiful. And even when the leaves fall, it's pretty because the structure is so beautiful. And so it's not a time that it isn't pretty. So just adding that in. And over here, carrying it back out the other side. There we go. Then once you have everything in your hand, you think about what else you might want. Should you give it a little tug, get a little height? Where do you want to stop? And then one more bit of bind wire to hold it all into place. So backing up, just a quick review again. As we're all getting ready for the holidays, it's my belief that this year's holiday is going to be one of the biggest seasons that we as professionals have encountered. People are going to need flowers to decorate their home. As Lori mentioned, they're buying wreaths already. They're looking for things for their house. I have a friend that has a pumpkin patch and they have been selling more pumpkins than ever before already. He's like, said they're starting weeks ahead of time and he's not sure he's even going to have enough pumpkins. And he says, I have more pumpkins than I've ever had, but people are desperate for beauty in their lives. And so they're buying, 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 buying. And there's only so much you and I and we can do in a day and still take care of ourselves. You can only do so many things. How many arrangements can you make in a day and do it well and have fun? Because that's really important too. You've got to be able to have fun. So planning ahead for this busy holiday season, doing as much preparation ahead of time, be it pre-greening, be it making bows, be it making an armature so that you have everything done so that when it comes time to actually design, you can just start adding flowers because you have a base to build upon. I'm going to chop this down with pruners because it's a little too bulky to get in there with my knife. And I don't want to cut my hand. So I'm just using a pruner and then setting it in. And then once it's in place, Deciding what is the front, what is the back, because you can adjust a little bit, just kind of move it around. And it's ready to deliver quick and easy and fun. And it could work for Halloween, it could work for Thanksgiving, it could work for all of autumn. Doesn't quite work for Christmas with these fall colors, but it's still there. It just works. So what other questions and sets are going on out there? So Arthur's wondering if you see any Christmas trends coming down the pipeline yet. You know, Christmas trends, it's interesting. I would say handicrafts and texture are the two things I'm seeing more than anything. And by handicrafts, I mean little detailed touches that make it one of a kind that really shows a bit of craftsmanship. Might be some weaving, might be some color blocking, might be some uh, manipulation of foliage, but that personal craftsmanship within the design, along with texture. And it can be texture from the calcinia, it can be texture from foliage, it can be texture from berries, it could be texture from knitting. You know, I love taking yarn and just even hand knitting it and then weaving it through an arrangement as though it was a ribbon, but it's actually a knitting of some sort. You can do the same thing with wires. Now, 
I talked about craftsmanship, it can be something as simple as, as taking lily grass and binding it together. You want to line it up so that it's all going the same way. See how it's draping the same way? Don't turn it like that. That's wrong. Got to be like that. I know, kind of picky, don't you think? But if you're not picky, then it's wrong. It's just the way it is. Then I'm just going to lash this together with some corsage tape. So I know we had some people here from the UK, and I have to ask because I've always been told, and I don't know this for facts, so you from the UK, chime in here. I've been told that corsage tape in the UK is known as gutta percha. Is that correct? Gutta percha. And I always thought that was a cool thing to know, but I kind of wonder if that's true. I don't know. So answer me away there. So now I'm taking my lily grass that I bound together at the end, and I'm just braiding it. Like you would braid hair, which is something I, you can tell I've done a lot of with so much hair on my head. Um, but just braiding it from one end to the other. And I'm doing double strands just because I wanted it a little bit bigger. So this would be one of the manipulation things that we teach you in class. It's not a very tricky one. It's just taking your foliage and braiding it like hair. But it's kind of fun. It gives it a little different look. And this would be craftsmanship that could go into your work. The other thing I'm seeing in Christmas is kind of multi here. So there's several things. I'm seeing a resurgence of tradition, so um, blown glass ornaments, things that are reminiscent of your childhood, so more of a thinking back to simpler times so that it's more traditional. Then I'm also seeing a minimalist approach to things where people are saying, you know, I don't want it to look quite so overdone. But that doesn't mean they don't want it fabulous. So people are buying one super exquisite bloom and spotlighting it in a keepsake vase as opposed to a full arrangement. Or they are looking for the most perfect glass ornament that they've ever found rather than buying a box of standard red bulbs. So kind of a minimalist, a return to tradition, and then I'm seeing a lot of icy um, whites and blues and silvers kind of working together. So it's kind of fun how it's a cross section of things. You, it's not any one trend that is super strong. And I think that's because as the pandemic has set in and we've all had to do soul searching of who we are and who we want to be, we're focusing more on what's appropriate for us personally as opposed to what's definitely on trend that everybody's doing and so I have to do it. Don't see that as much. Okay. So now I've got just that little bit of a loop there, braided grass, that I can then set into my arrangement. We'll go back to the one that I sort of started for Christmas, figure out where I want it to go. Do I want it to come up and over, or do I want it to come down and around? Because it could go either way, I'll show you. Okay, so there's the front. And I could make it so it comes up and over and just kind of curls around. Or I could bring it down and around. Or I could even bring it through, like so. Which do you like the best? Let's have a survey. I won't put it in until I hear. Should I go down? Should I go up, or should I go through? So up, down, or through. So I'll set that aside. You guys kind of monitor that, see what the plan is there, and we'll and, figure it out. And Leanne, so Grace says Gouda tape, and then Summer says, yes, Leanne, it's true. Yay! You know where I learned that? 
there was a book I had bought years ago, and it talked about Gutta Percha, and I was like, I don't even know what this is. And I had a student in class who was a dentist, and she says, well, that's what we use in dental work. I'm like, what? Well, and it is a tape. It's a dental tape as well. And so then, just through process of questioning and asking, um, I figured out that it had to be corsage tape, and so you validated it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I've got to figure out another thing to make while you guys are working away there. Since I know I have to add something to this, I just don't know what it is. So I think I'm going to go back to our autumn design and fill it in a little more. I had the yellows and the oranges, and I think I'll put a few more dahlias in this one. What I did is I was pulling what was left over from classes, and so we had class worked with leucospermum, class had worked with some gerberas, some crispetia, they'd had a little dusty miller, and they had some dahlias. Anyway, we always buy a little extra of everything because you don't want to run out. And so then when it came time to get ready for live, I said, well, we've got all these extras. Why don't I just use what we have rather than go buy more right now? Because it just seems silly. Um, didn't want it to go to waste. So it's kind of an eclectic mix of things, but that's something that you as a professional, if you can learn to use up everything and use the whole eclectic mix makes it more profitable for you because then you're being paid for everything that you buy as opposed to throwing some away and it kind of breaks my heart sometimes like this one it is broken so I can't really use it but it's still it's too pretty to throw away so it's the type of thing I just lay on my table so that I can look at it because I it makes me happy Maybe I'll take it home and put it on my dinner table so I can look at it while I'm eating dinner. You know, so many little silly things, but those are the things that make life worth living when you've got those little extra things in your life that are pretty. So we've got about 10 minutes left. If you have voted as to which way I need to go, let us know because it's time for me to be finishing up. You have yours? Yep. You want to go first? It's a win for through on oh, my side. Okay, so at first it was all down. Yeah. And then through Ooh. as well. Just, yeah. Okay, down. so it's going to go through. I love it. So I'm going to tuck in. I'm starting, as you can see, I'm running out of flowers here. So now I'm going to tuck in some red into my yellows and orange. But I'm going to keep it down really low because I don't want it to shout Christmas or Valentine's, but I like that depth of color, just bringing a little bit more into the design so that it's not quite so yellow, um, expanding on the analogous color harmony and just adding a little more, opening out. Okay. So as we are finishing, and before I go over there to put that through the middle, um, my challenge to you over this next period of time, as you're getting ready for the holidays and as you're living life and as you are figuring out how it all works for you, floral design during a pandemic, my challenge to you is that you really focus on yourself. Don't forget that part. I know we all keep talking about the customer and taking care of our business and taking care of life for the store or the flower shop or for your boutique or for your friends or whatever. But the reality is if you don't take care of you, you're not going to be able to take care of them. So practice self-care right now, today, tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Because if you do that, when it comes to the holidays, and everybody's realizing how different it is and how scary it is, because it is scary. What does it mean this year when we can't be with our loved ones? We can't travel. This Thanksgiving, I'm already a little distraught because it'll be the first time in many years that I haven't spent Thanksgiving with my friends. Thanksgiving is always a Friendsgiving, and we have spent it together for 25 years, a very long time. And I've only missed it 
a handful of times, maybe three total, because it's just always first on my list. Self-care, Thanksgiving with my friends, because then it gets into the holidays, it gets crazy busy, and I have a big family, and it just gets nuts. So practice self-care, and that's my challenge to you. So what are you going to do that makes you ready for the holidays? Marisa? Well, speaking of self-care and your little lonely dahlia over there, Sharon is suggesting that maybe you float the dahlia in a bubble bath. Uh, or Arthur says, float it in a wine glass. Um, and then we're also wanting to know if you could make a faux stem for that dahlia. You could, but it wouldn't last. It would still die. And so I could put a stem into it, but it would die. I think the best way to do it from all of those is the bubble bath would be pretty great. I think mean, that would be quite nice. Maybe turn on some nice music, light a candle, get in the tub and float my dahlia. That, I might do that. And then the other one and that I have to laugh because you said float it in a wine glass. I have some martini glasses that give you a wider surface that are perfect for floating blossoms because in a wine glass it drops down and sometimes it's not quite large enough but a martini glass gives you that flair and so the martini glass would be perfect with this um, and I have two different sizes so I can determine which martini glass works best with it uh, just because yeah that would be pretty great so before our minutes are up here I'm going to go ahead and add this through the middle so to do that I have the flared end. I'm going to use a wood pick on that. I have to come around here and find a wood pick. There we go. We do have some other questions over here, Leanne. Okay, we um, got about five minutes. What yeah, have we got? So I have Lynn Ann. Um, she's wanting. She's noticing that your um, you keep snapping your foliage, and is wondering if that's that helps with hydration. Yes, if you've got a woody item like pepperberry you can cut it with your knife but it's so woody sometimes it's better just snap it and it works really well to be able to just go and place it in and it drinks better so yes on my woody items i oftentimes just snap it i don't cut it with my knife something like this i definitely need to use my knife so yeah. and then any suggestions or favorites for hanukkah flowers you know, on the Hanukkah flowers, it's interesting because we all say, oh, we need to do Hanukkah flowers and such. But when I talk to my Jewish friends, they say that reality, a lot of flowers are not done for Hanukkah. It's not a really big decorating thing. But then when I talk to my Jewish flower friends, they're like, well, of course we have to have flowers for Hanukkah. So I think it is more about the person. And what I find is that... The key is that it is not Christmas, because it's just like Christmas can be anything depending on what your choices and your desires are. Hanukkah can be anything. You know, the iconic is to do blue and white, but if that doesn't match their home, it doesn't have to be blue and white. The key is that it shouldn't be red and green. So it's being thoughtful, thinking about what works in their home. For my friends, um, that I visit them frequently over Hanukkah, I often do just all white because that works in their home. Their home is very sleek, very minimal, very pristine, and it really doesn't work with color. It's invasive because when they have color, it's very specific for what they like. And so I always just do whites and foliage, and that seems to work well for them. So I think for Hanukkah, that's what you want to think about is what works in the home, and then make sure that it's not just, oh, well, I'll take the poinsettia out so it doesn't look like Christmas. No, make sure it isn't Christmas. That's just a respectful thing. So I've got that kind of through, and then I added A little more that just trailed down so that it carried it and then I'm going to add a little more pepperberry right in there as well so that it all just kind of flows through so it goes through and out and then I need to come out the other side because I don't want it to look totally one-sided so bringing three more strands 
giving it a cut, softening it. Any last questions before we say bye? Michelle. Not a question, but Savannah said she and her husband just closed on property that will be her flower studio, and she plans to be open by Valentine's Day. Oh, wow, Savannah, that's exciting. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Opening a new business now is the perfect time because with the pandemic, people need flowers. They need them desperately. And starting from scratch like that, you don't have huge overheads set up so you can plan in a budget mode to make it all work. So good for you. So today we talked about the holidays. I challenge you to take care of yourself. Please share away. If you know somebody who should join us for flower school, tag them. Let them know. Join me next week. We'll be talking about pricing. Yeah, that question that you always ask and we always ignore because we aren't talking about pricing every day. But next week we will be talking about pricing for the professional. And we'll probably throw in some holiday before now, you know, or between now and the end of the year as well. But this was kind of fun. Did a little bit of talk, a little bit of design. Now it's your turn. Make sure you create. Make sure you take care of yourself. Get ready for these coming holidays. And of course, do something you love. See you next week.